when you look at uh, the economy, you have to first of all look at financial markets, among other markets. Mm -hmm. And you first of all have to see the price of financial services depends very much on the participation of that market. Let me come to specific examples in Kenya. You look at 2008 survey, 2000, 2009 financial access survey showed that only 23% of the Kenyan population mm -hmm. were covered by the financial system. In fact, when you go deeper and look at well, how many accounts, there are about 2.3 million accounts by that time. They have increased since then. But the bottom line is that what does the picture show? One, there are so many excluded from the market. Two, the cost of providing financial services is so high because it's concentrated on a particular range of people. Mm -hmm. Those are very serious, uh, uh, perhaps, constraints. Mm -hmm. Because one of the things we do know is that financial service, the financial sector itself should mobilize savings for investment. Now, countries that we come from actually develop and grow just because of investment. Now, if you cannot supply investments, especially mobilize savings to supply these investments in the country, then you always continue in a low trap, low growth trap. The second thing is that those excluded from the banking sector, they are banned. Also, are the majority poor. Right. Well, let's first of all investigate that right. The unbanked themselves are poor. One of the celebrated studies in Kenya on poverty is that their, the lack of access to markets is both a characteristic of the poor and also a fundamental cause of poverty. Mm -hmm. So you can see that financial sector itself even is more important rather than other markets because other markets will play the role of selling your products, selling your labor and all that. But the most important thing in financial markets is that you can accumulate capital and through savings and uh, perhaps affordable credit, you can accumulate capital. That is, you can escape from the poverty trap. So essentially, there is a very, very important, important aspect of uh, financial markets. The second one, which is more general, macroeconomics, is that if you have so many people excluded from the market, then it means there are two effects. One perhaps the inf informal market. Two, there's uh, too much currency outside the banking system because people are saving their money in, in the pillows. And the third one, which is more important, is that monetary policy is not going to be effective because monetary policy runs because of the incentive or right. perhaps the instruments that you use and they are used inside the sector. Mm -hmm. So essentially, from the word go, then financial inclusion becomes very, very important because it gives you a, a platform to include everyone in the banking sector. But then, of course, you have to go back and say, if you are poor, how would you put your money in the bank? Then we have to go back and say, what are the instruments that, that will make that work? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. One of the results is that we have moved from about 2.3 million accounts in banking sector to about to over 10 million accounts. That's one. Two, uh, the mobile uh, network accounts have increased to more than 10 million. And that, that's very important. Then the next question is, how did you achieve this? First, we have initiated and introduced and even developed new institutions to help us cope with the situation. And the, 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 the several new institutions that we can talk about, but the latest one I can actually pinpoint is credit reference bureaus. It affords, it helps sharing information. The new uh, initiatives that we have introduced, the first one is actually uh, agent banking. It helps uh, banks to roll out uh, networks without, with, which are cost effective. Mm -hmm. the, 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 the second set of institutions that we have introduced is we have licensed microfinance. Microfinance institutions, because of their nature, they are grouped into two categories. You can be community-based or you can be nationwide. So it means we are trying to get people uh, to get financial services to the people through institutions that can work for them. We, we have to remember that in, when you're living in an economy with segment, segmented markets, you have to come up with products that cater for each segment of the market. And if you come up with, a, let's say, a micro aspect of it, maybe you miss the market because you end up looking at a particular se section of the market. Right. So for us, introducing those institutions and those initiatives are going to cater for each and every segment of the market. Actually, even at the central bank level, we have also introduced uh, currency centers that allows or reduces cost to banks in terms of currency distribution. 
And we have also allowed other instruments that are working, for example, horizontal reports to redistribute liquidity cheaply. So essentially we have um, provided, in the last uh, three and a half years, we have provided so many instruments and institutions and initiatives that has allowed us to really move forward in terms of financial inclusion. Yeah. That is a very important question because it is now what is in the table. It, is, it shows how you can uh, leverage on technological developments to improve on, the, uh, on any platform of a service. In this case, it's a financial service. Let me say that Mpesa started way back in 2006 as, people, uh, as a product people uh, or Kenyans trying to trade in airtime. And obviously, say everybody so this is a market that can develop. Now, the licensing and, uh, of products related to Mpesa was very, very important because it allows you wherever you are, that you can actually withdraw money or somebody can send you money. But that is one aspect of it. Beyond that, what else can you do once the money is transferred to you? Can you effect payments? That was the next level, that you can even effect payments. Now we've moved to the next level of saying, please, you can even now even pay your loans uh, through M-Pesa. Now, but the next platform is to say, how do you again improve? Because we started with the unbanked. We started with low level of penetration. Now, how do you improve the intermediation or deepen the financial system by actually getting M-Pesa to do this? So the next step was to create micro accounts that can be operated through M-Pesa. So for us, what have we done? As a central bank, we have looked at this market develop. Don't forget, as a regulator, you are also a development agent of the market. We have encouraged this market to develop. Ours is to scatter out, to ring fence each and every product that has been produced, to assess its risk, to assess its affordability, and to assess its own operational platform. That has helped us to encourage the market to grow. And we know we have 45 banks. Not all every bank has a platform, but all the banks are trying to come up with different platforms. That for us has encouraged us to develop the market further. But of course, it has its own uh, positives and negatives. One, we have managed to bring m most of the uh, currency in circulation into the banking system. It's good for monetary policy. It's good for effectiveness of monetary policy. But also, I, on Friday when I was leaving Nairobi, I discussed with the IMF and I said it has also ruined the standard monetary targeting model for IMF because the standard monetary program assumes constant velocity and assumes constant money multiplier. What has happened is that in Kenya, since 2007, velocity has de been declining steadily. That's a good reflection of financial deepening, by the way. But it's also dangerous, uh, uh, challenging now to come up with a monetary program that makes that assumption of constant velocity. And of course, it may tell us, is money demand unstable? But the second one is also because of innovations in the financial system, then also the money multiplier is increasing steadily, depending on which uh, monetary aggregate we are looking vis-a-vis -vis the broad aggregate. So essentially, it is now a challenge for us to say, let's start finding or thinking beyond the box in terms of the future of our monetary program with IMF. How will it look like given these challenges? Either look for another aggregate or secondary, still see how you can incorporate changing velocity. So you can see that the developments have one outcome, or uh, maybe several outcomes. One, we have included a large percentage of unbanked into the banking system. Two, we have deepened the financial system. And the financial system, including, uh, depending, uh, because of our target in terms of development blueprint, we have argued that we need to develop a savings to GDP ratio must increase to about 30, 32 percent. It cannot increase if we don't have instruments for savings. Three, it has encouraged banks to go out and source for deposits. And of course, that has worked through the mobile uh, form, uh, platform. And that is very, very important. And finally, for us all, we are very happy because financial development leads to economic vibrancy. Of course, economic vibrancy is the one that leads financial development. But after that, the financial development takes over. And we are seeing much of this. So we are very encouraged in terms of the instruments for saving, the in payment system, which makes it effective and cheaper. And finally, at the end of the day, we'll drive cost-effective financial services. I think we have achieved that very well in the last four years. But there's still a lot of room to do more.
We are not members of G20, but what we have done is that we have made our preparations and commentary to the G20. I was in Seoul just three weeks ago, okay. and I did present to them about the developing countries and financial inclusion is a very critical area. What does it mean? Because uh, in developing countries, regulators don't, search, don't just set the rules. They actually define the development targets of the market, mm -hmm. and they safeguard the market as well as they get, uh, targeting the rules. Two, we need to include financial inclusion in the agenda. But financial inclusion is not setting targets. AFI has set its own target in developing countries, saying that we need to include 500 million people into the banking sector by 2012. That is AFI's own target because it's a network. But if you set global targets like the MDGs without actually considering the, 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 the challenges of actually to achieve them, we may end up talking about MDGs and everybody is running behind. We need to come and understand the platform AFI is working. We need to share the experiences and we need also to share the actual the benefit. With that, we are going to encourage the market to grow. It is very, very important that the G20 is really an outcome of global financial crisis. So what does the global financial crisis inform us? One, how do you price risk and mitigate against risk? And that was a bigger problem in G7 not in G20. But what we are really saying is that we need to safeguard the future by taking advantage of that, one, to strengthen our rules, but also to strengthen our capability in understanding how the market is evolving. AFI Network tells us, understand how the market is evolving, guide the market, and develop capacity, both in the market, institutions that you supervise, and the, institution, the, 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 the regulator, the institution of the regulator must be strengthened. In that way, you make sure that the developments in the market are well balanced. The first one is actually to share, to learn from uh, AFI, the experiences of other countries. Two, those experiences can actually provide a platform for policy, uh, for policy choices or innovations that can work. Actually, when we joined AFI, one of the things that we did first was actually to learn how agent banking was, how agent banking was working in other countries. It helped us to roll out agent banking models. Now, what does agent banking do? It allows, since you, you do believe that the cost outlays in terms of rolling out branch networks of banks is the one that prevents banks going into remote and uh, perhaps low income areas, the best thing is to have a simpler model that is cost effective, mm -hmm. and that is agency. agency. Agent banking is becoming very important. So one advantage of being in AFI is actually to share in those experiences and also to get support, either short term support or peer exchanges that helps you to develop instruments that can work. Instruments can work that can work for most of the segments in the market. If you believe the unbanked are prevented from the banking sector because of fiscal distances, then agent banking works for them. If you believe that the unbanked cannot be banked because of cost of barriers to entry is cost and cost of maintaining their accounts, then you deal with that from a domestic level. But sharing experiences in AFI is a very, very important way because it allows you to break new grounds where you can actually encourage markets to grow. Okay. What we take away from this conference is to understand that sharing experiences that have worked is very, very important. Mark you have worked. But those, experience, those innovations that have worked in one country do not necessarily work in the other. What they do is that you, you, you tailor them to work in the countries that, uh, that you represent. Two, there could be suppressed demand in the countries we represent. It's only that we have not given space. So the, the mes second message is that policy makers, the regulators must give space for the market to innovate. Once you innovate, don't worry about the regulations that may come by. The regulations can be shared now. The example is Kenya. We wanted to come up with branchless banking. We wanted to come up with agents models that will operate through the agency banking. We realized that we can only use the AFI network to achieve this. And my colleagues went to Latin America to run this. What happened? We were able to roll out the regulations and we have licensed over 5,000 agents. But who are the main who are the main targets for these agents? The first line of target was actually the 
agents who operate the mobile phone payments. You can see the synergies that are coming through. So essentially the message is we have to learn the lessons that are coming from the world. We have to learn the lessons about financial inclusion. But learning, the best way to learn financial inclusion is not to set conditionalities. The best is to share experiences across. The world where conditionalities were working never worked very well because essentially you impose structures and institutions that didn't operate. We want to learn after the market to safeguard it, to link fence any risk, but also create institutions that safeguard the successes in the market. We want to guard our successes enough in terms of financial inclusion, selfishly because success begets success.